Hi, this is Miss Logan. This is AP Physics 1. This is our Unit 0 Part 2 review, which will go over trig functions, scientific notation, and graphing. As a reminder that you need to watch the lesson and take some notes, remember that you can pause, rewind, and fast forward. And when you are done with this lesson, you need to complete the Google form and press Done on Google Classroom. So let's begin by discussing our trig functions. So this is in any situation when we need to find an unknown angle or an unknown side. Okay, so our first one, the Sokotoa. We have our sine, that's our opposite over our hypotenuse. So remember that's where our angle is projecting, that's our opposite. And our hypotenuse is our longest edge. Cosine is our adjacent, so the side closest to it over our hypotenuse. And our tan is our opposite over our adjacent. We are often going to see our trig functions when we're talking about any sort of 2D motion. So let's just practice these for a little bit. Um, so I have my angle here, and then I have my adjacent side, and I have my hypotenuse. So that means I need to use my cosine. So my cosine is my adjacent over hypotenuse. So we know that I need to solve for my hypotenuse. So let's rearrange our equation. So I'm going to have cosine theta h over a. So that's going to give me h equals a over cosine theta. And from here, all I need to do is plug in my numbers. So I'm going to get 45 over 0 0.60, which is going to give me... 75. So it's always good to check yourself here. My hypotenuse should always be longer than my other sides, which it is. Okay, so my other, my other example over here, I have my angle and I have my adjacent side and then I'm looking for my opposite. So that means I need to use my tan function. So tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So as a reminder, we need to rearrange my equation. So I'm going to have a tan theta equals my opposite. Let's plug in my numbers. So I'm going to have 14 times tan theta equals my opposite. So as a reminder, when we are doing these problems, we need to be in our degree function. If we don't have our degree, it's a pretty easy way to get your answer wrong. So my answer is going to be my opposite equals 32.98. Okay, our second topic for today is scientific notation. So scientific notation is something that we may see a lot, we may not, it's just going to depend on the problems. But it's important for us to remember some tricks to make our lives a little bit easier. So to get started, our scientific notation, we have our coefficient. This is between 1 and 9.999, just less than 10. Then we have our base, which is always times 10, and then our exponent. This can be negative or it can be positive. So we're often going to be converting from large numbers to small numbers. So for instance, if you get a really small number or a very large number in your calculator, I would recommend putting in the scientific notation to make your life easier. So if I start out with a large number, I am moving 9 to the left in this case, so that I have something between 1 and 10 in the front, 3.2, times 10 to the 9. So if it's a large number, it's positive. But in this example, I have a very small number, so I'm moving my decimal seven places to the right. Now, as a reminder, whenever we have very small numbers, this coefficient in front still needs to be between 1 and 10. So you're going to need to move the decimal place pretty far over to get there. Um, in these cases, we always have a negative, so a very small number, we're going to have a negative. So adding and subtracting in scientific notation is something that's really going to save us time overall. Um, yeah, you can probably use your calculator and that's fine, however, it may be easier to just do it in your head to save a little bit of time. 
So this one we have 3 times 10 to the 8 plus 4 times 10 to the 8th. Now I need to have the exact same exponent here. Then I can just add these two together. So I get 7 times 10 to the 8th. This also works when I am subtracting. So as long as I have the same exponents, I can add or subtract them. So if I get into a case that looks like this, I need to change one of these exponents so they equal the other one. So an example of this, if I have 3 times 10 to the 7th and I want to change it to 3 times 10 to the 8th, I would change this to 0 0.3 times 10 to the 8th. Now, you may be saying that's not in proper scientific notation. If we're adding and subtracting, that's perfectly fine. But this is a trick that might save you some time later on. All right, so multiplying and dividing, we're using the same rules that we would for exponents in math. So these front two numbers, my coefficients, I'm going to be multiplying them, or if I'm dividing, I divide them. And then my exponents here, I am going to be adding them together. And if I'm dividing, I'm going to be subtracting them. So when I multiply my two coefficients, I'm going to get 30.06. When I add my exponents, I'll get to the negative 7. Now you'll notice this is not in scientific notation. Well, I need to make that happen so it looks a little bit nicer. So I'm moving over 1 to the left here. So I can subtract this and make it 6. So my answer would be 3.006 times 10 to the negative 6. Lastly, some reminders for graphing that we have our correlations memorized. So my positive correlations, my negative correlations, no correlation, and then this curvy linear correlation. So we kind of see this swoosh pattern. So something that we'll be working on this year is looking at scatter plots and actually making our line of best fit. Now if we look at this line, we'll notice that it has a y-intercept and it has a slope. So this year we will be working on creating our y equals mx plus b, our linear relationships for different graphs. Okay, so make sure your notes are done. You need to complete the Google form and press done on Google Classroom. We will be practicing a lot of this in class. If you'd like to get started on your practice packet, that's fine. Completely up to you. See you soon.